Now you're ready to navigate the Final Cut Pro 10 environment, work in the timeline, use tools, work with audio, transitions, titles and graphics, and apply effects. And in the last segment, you learned how to render a file and how to choose codec, resolution, and format. In this lesson, we're going to go over another way to render your file using Compressor. Starting with why you might use Compressor, how to send renders to it, and how to add multiple render settings. Let's go head first into Compressor. Now that we know how to export out of Final Cut Pro 10, let's take a look at the companion program Compressor. Now Compressor can be found at the App Store for $49.99 and what it does is it will allow you to export files with different settings than what Final Cut Pro 10 offers. It's going to give you more robust, more ability to have a more variance in what format and codecs you're using. As well, you can batch render so you can have multiple projects rendering at the same time so you can just walk away and have them rendered. And then lastly, you can actually offer different format and codec options to the same project so that if you have, say, five different outlets that you're delivering your file to, you can actually render them all right after each other with different settings so that you have five different files of that one project so that you can deliver them to where you need to. You don't have to do them one at a time and you can do whatever you need to get those delivered to those different outlets. And then lastly, you can create custom render settings that now can be accessed within Final Cut Pro 10. So it actually is making Final Cut Pro stronger by offering you new settings that you can choose for exporting just within Final Cut Pro 10. To access Compressor, you can do it two different ways. We can do it through our normal export window by File, Share, Master File, or Command-E, and it brings up this window and where you find it is you go into settings and you go down to open with. So this is after it's done rendering with these settings, it's going to choose to open it up with compressor. The only problem with that is, is right now we're actually compressing the file. So if we're compressing it and then we're opening up with compressor and compressing it again, you're going to have two sets of compression on your video. It's not going to be the best way to do it unless you're of course rendering uncompressed and then you're doing that but then you have an uncompressed file that's probably going to be quite large and you don't need to do that it might fit to what you're trying to do but it isn't necessarily the best way to do it unless you need that uncompressed file so i'm going to cancel out of this because there's a faster easier simpler way that's not going to make you another file so file send a compressor. Now what it's going to do is going to open up compressor now and here it is. So right off the bat we have our project. I actually already imported it once so now it has the other. It's loading the project and now it's just linked directly to Final Cut Pro. I can play this and it's going to play through. It's going to show me the video and the edit that I had done. And now what I can do is I can actually add output. So I can keep on adding outputs like I had said, so you can have multiple renders of the same project. But what we're going to do is we're just going to click on add outputs. Okay, in this window you have all sorts of options and lots of tabs to pull down. So if I want to create a Blu-ray, I can go here and I can choose H.264 for Blu-ray. I can come here and we will cover this in a, another segment, but we can publish to Facebook and to Vimeo and to YouTube. We can have custom settings that are pretty much set up for Apple devices different audio formats and motion graphics. Now we can export MPEG files and you have ProRes, uncompressed, and video sharing services. So we're going to go into ProRes, we're going to choose 444 with Alpha, which wasn't an option within Final Cut Pro, and we can say OK. And there it is, now it's an option. So if I come over here and I see these plus and minus on the file name here on the very end of the project in the queue, I can click on it and add another output. So say I want to create a file for Blu-ray, I'm gonna choose that and I can go okay. And boom, it offers me another render of the same file. So now working within the timeline 4K, now it's gonna create two files, one Apple ProRes 4444, with alpha and a H.264 for Blu-ray. That's gonna give you lots of ability to just walk away, let it render and come back and you'll have it all done. So there's another location that you can find all of your different presets and custom settings for your different compressors. So we did it when we just added another render to our queue, but I can also go over here to show. And at this point I can then go and look at all of my different options and I can go and 
each one of them I can grab and drag right onto my render and it will add another render of that. Once you say decide to start rendering, you can then see it working within the compressor here. So let's take a look at that. If I press start batch, it's going to start doing that. Now we're in the active and if I just toggle this down, you can see what it's working on and how much progress it actually has. You can cancel these or pause them. And then when they're done, they're gonna show up in the completed area and the list here. And you can clear your history or what have you. And that's using the compressor. In our next segment, we're gonna be going over how to publish your video directly from Final Cut Pro 10.